Jennifer, let's talk about long-term care insurance premiums and potential deductions that people can could take. I know you already said that there is that 7.5% floor for medical deduction. So let's get into that. If you are an individual taxpayer who is itemizing deductions, there is there are age brackets and there are deductible premium limits if you have long-term care insurance, correct? Yes, correct. And I see this a decent amount for people that have already started to plan for retirement, plan for that Mm long-term care. They're paying premiums now. And so when you're thinking about that total pool of medical expenses that can qualify to see if you can kick past that 7.5% floor, uh, long-term care premiums can be something that you can consider in the pool, subject to certain thresholds. So I, I think... It, as with everything else that we've talked about, the rules are constantly changing. But as an example, if you have an individual that's already paying into their long-term care, they can deduct up to $480 if they're 40 or under. Mm-hmm. 41 to 50, that number increases to $890. Mm-hmm. 51 to 60, the amount increases again to $1,790 and, and so on and so forth. You can get right. to a point where if the person is paying into long-term care insurance, they're paying those premiums, the highest amount that you can deduct is 5960 if you're 71 or older. Right. And Adjusted for 2023, I think we should make that clear too, that that's as of 2023. So, you know, every year we typically see small changes, typically. Uh, so that is something that you do want to consult with your tax professional. But I would imagine that it could be difficult for individual taxpayers to be able to do that because you have to itemize your deductions in order to take advantage of that, right? So maybe it's not as often as you would hope or think it would be, but the real benefits we see and I see are when we have business owners, right? That's right. Because then you're moving from that deduction being on Schedule A as an itemized deduction Two, it can be part of their self-employed health insurance deduction that isn't subject to the same thresholds that we've been talking about with the 7.5% floor. Now, it's still subject to those specific dollar amounts that we talked about that are indexed for inflation and change every year. But you can deduct it, what we call it above the line. So before you get to your adjusted gross income that factors into how your tax is calculated, it can be deducted there without being subject to the seven and a half percent floor. So right, self-employed people, yeah, they, they do get yeah. more of a benefit here. Right. And can you can you briefly explain that above the line a little bit more? I mean, it is more of an advantage when it is above the line, right, than when it is below the line. So can you break that down for the listeners? Sure. So there's a couple of benefits that come into play that I think of when you talk about the difference between above the line and below the line. Uh, One is your starting point for your Ohio taxable income and for many states is your adjusted gross income. So Mm -hmm. you get the benefit of that deduction on your Ohio return for those listeners that are in Ohio if it's an above the line deduction. Um, You also can get the benefit because above the line comes into play before you get into either your itemized deduction or standard deductions. And so the lower we can get that adjusted gross income, then all the various thresholds that are derived from AGI, we we shorten it in tax world, the lower you can get that, then the lower your various thresholds are that other things are calculated on. Big picture, I think of it as You've got income, you've got above the line deductions, gets you to adjusted gross income. Then you have itemized deductions or standard deduction, and we'll not get into that, but it's an either or, not both. Yeah. Gets you to your taxable income that then taxes based upon taxes due, less the credits that we talked about before. Right. Is what you so actually think- pay. Right. I think the main takeaway here is if you think that there might be potential deductibility for your long-term care insurance premiums, you definitely want to talk to your tax professional about that. But the most beneficial and advantageous way to actually get those deductions is if you're a C corporation, right? Yes. And then self-employed business owners Um, employees, and then lastly, I would say individual taxpayers who itemize deductions, correct? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. I think especially when you're talking about business owners versus employees and that sort of Mm -hmm. thing, as far as the amount that's deducted and what's taxed and what's not, it really depends on the specific business 
structure, and then we mm-hmm. kind of take it from there. So specific to your own uh, situation, you can run it through with your tax person and go from yeah. there. Yeah. One thing that we do love about the long-term care insurance is that there are these potential deductions up front, but then the benefits are tax-free up to per diem limits if you've got a cash policy, unless your actual expenses are more than that. And you can prove that, but what a great benefit, right? Tax-free benefits. That way you're not having to convert assets to income and then you're paying taxes on that, but you're guaranteed. Okay. I know that when I receive a check, or, you know, care is paid for, I don't have to worry about paying tax on that. That's right. And I think too, with a lot of taxpayers, the inclination is to think I got this money. So what do I do about it with taxes? I see this also with life insurance payouts, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. oh, I've got this big payout, what amount of this is taxable. And like the long-term care situation that you just talked about, life insurance also isn't taxable when you receive right. it. So right. it, it should be a win <laughs> there for right. taxpayers. Right. I do want to hit on too. It depends on what type of long-term care insurance policy you have. If you have a traditional policy that's pure insurance, it's just strictly long-term care. That is going to be different from if you have a linked benefit or a hybrid policy where you are combining long-term care coverage with, let's say, life insurance, right? In the form of a death benefit or cash value from an annuity. So there are a handful of linked benefit policies where they will actually separate those charges for the long-term care coverage and then for the life insurance coverage. You cannot get any deductions from the life insurance right? And, and at any time, it has to be strictly on that long-term care coverage. So if you're even investigating long-term care insurance and you're looking at a linked benefit solution, you want to ask, you know, are these charges separate? Am I paying separate premiums for the long-term care portion of it and the life insurance uh, portion of it? Because that way you can hopefully get some type of deduction there. That is a great point. 